<laughs> Pretty exciting stuff. The role of technology and and digital products in in agriculture is what brought me here, um, and uh, the ability to actually make that impact is uh, is what drove the passion of you know being able to take this role and and drive that transformation in agriculture. The last major change in agriculture was about you know 40 50 years ago 1965 70s um, and that's when new technologies new ways of fertilizing the fields new crop production products were invented at Syngenta uh, the realization that we are looking at new business models uh, helping farmers make better data driven decisions um, was a, a key impact. When we started to roll out our digital tools to the growers and when we saw the growers really making um, data-driven decisions, um, that spurred this innovation that, you know, new business models, new ways of doing business as possible. Uh, that would be a key moment, I would say, for the organization. Uh, for me personally, uh, I mean, I come from a digital technology background I have uh, in agriculture, in education, in defense, I've seen the role that technology can play in actually changing the field. Uh, so so for me, this was a, a matter of, you know, what, what can we do? What opportunities can we unlock in agriculture? The last transformation 50 years back, uh, made the yield improvement in agriculture. Uh, and if we were to go back to that technology today, we even if we convert 80% of Earth's land into agriculture, we won't be able to feed the uh, the current world population. Uh, think about, you know, converting all of Amazon, all of Sahara, all of Siberia into agriculture, and it still won't be enough. Uh, and this really is what informs us for the future, that as the uh, the, the population continues to grow, uh, as the world food crisis continues to become more and more severe, uh, the only way to unlock that potential is through the use of technology, uh, optimizing inputs, maximizing the yields, and helping growers improve their profitability. So I think that's basically where agriculture industry is heading. There are perhaps two different dimensions of you know what it means to the society. Uh, the first one and perhaps most important today is the food security in the world. Um, I mean, the, 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 the pandemic and the current geopolitical situation in Eastern Europe uh, has led to a sudden increase. Uh, the most recent uh, reports from the UN Food Security Council says that there are 250 million people at a severe risk of uh, uh, food security. And that impact on society is something which we all owe it to the population of the world is in, in helping improve the yields, in helping, you know, make better, more resilient crops, which can, you know, feed the world. Um, and then of course, there is the dimension of regenerative agriculture and nature positive farming. So helping reduce carbon, uh, helping, you know, more sustainable practices to be followed by the growers. Uh, so that, you know, you take care of the planet while ensuring food safety for the world. Uh, those really are the two big societal problems which we have to solve. When a farmer is making a decision on which seed variety to plant, right? So they first have to decide whether I'm planting corn or soy. Uh, even corn, there are multiple different varieties. Um, and depending upon your soil conditions, weather conditions, each variety will perform different. Uh, so we actually help the farmers make that decision based on, you know, uh, a study of the soil in their field, weather predictions in, in their area, the historical yield patterns and so on. So using all of that data, 
combining it with the data from our research and development in incubating those new varieties to actually suggest to the grower, you know, which field, uh, which type of uh, crop variety they should be using. So that's an example of a decision which is driven by data. Ultimately, the result is that, uh, you know, you if you're able to place the genetics in a better soil environment, then the yield will be better. Uh, another example is if you have a large field, you know, hundreds of thousands of acres, uh, the grower has to, to scout every part of the field, but it's not possible because it's a very large field. So we use satellite imagery to actually look at which part of the field has, uh, let's say, showing signs of stress and then direct the grower to actually visit that part. Uh, so it improves your efficiency and, and the operational cost on the farm while allowing the growers to take care of the crop in season. I think, I mean, something as simple as uh, most of uh, developing countries today depend upon grain export uh, that comes from Russia and Ukraine. And if that export is stopped, uh, uh, the prices will go up and there will also be a shortage of uh, you know, available food. So the question is, how does the world actually make up for that kind of shortfall? Um, we can help uh, in many different ways, right? One is, of course, uh, sunflower, which was the main crop in Ukraine. You know, can are there other agroecological conditions where sunflower could be grown to make up for at least part of that shortfall or grain, for example. Um, then there is, you know, the question of uh, helping the farmers adopt to the new crop, helping them improve the yield of their existing crops uh, so that, you know, the, the, the yield is, is enough to feed the growing population in the world. Uh, and in the mix of this, if you look at, you know, the the export restrictions that countries are putting, uh, that makes the situation even worse. So uh, using technology to uh, to help the growers make the planting decisions, improve their yield, and helping the harvest reach the right uh, markets is where, you know, that, that's how you basically start to, to look at the food security question. Uh, then there is the debate around, you know, whether uh, some of the uh, organic farming discussions and so on. Uh, will that help in taking care of the planet? Uh, but, you know, our CEO recently also uh, went on record and spoke about the fact that uh, organic farming is not necessarily going to help the yield because the yield uh, is, is likely to go down. So then if you stay focused on, you know, ensuring that uh, the food security and the yield is maximized, while taking care of the planet, uh, then I think we have a array of hope. The future is even more interesting in terms of you know the the some of the new type of uh, uh, technology trends that we will see. Um, the industry is moving towards more autonomous execution, more mechanization. Um, you know what we saw as broadcast application of uh, you know crop inputs uh, is starting to get into what we call as variable rate and see and spray so you could have uh, autonomous machines going through the field looking for signs of stress and applying a crop protection product only on on that spot or uh, drones right which are actually harvesting the field for you so you know you you're in an apple orchard the drone is flying around looking at that apple, looks ripe enough, automatically plucks it and drops it into the harvester. So some really interesting technologies that are under development uh, makes it exciting, both from this perspective to, to imagine, you know, possibilities like this uh, and uh, for the impact on society. So, but the, a lot of it is still experimental, still under, you know, small scale inside the labs. Uh, and and there are several companies, large and small, working on actually trying to scale these solutions. That's pretty exciting stuff. <laughs> <laughs>